This is the second part of the musky leader series. Uh, I think there's only going to be two parts. Today I'm going to address leader build, which is incredibly important. In fact, I would put it above what rod you have. I would also put it above what reel you have. I would also put it above the $75 nippers that are hanging from your vest. Don't rant, don't rant, don't rant, don't rant. Okay, your first decision when picking a musky leader is obviously your bite guard. If you haven't seen the first part of this video, check that out. That really isn't as important as the build of your leader. Shortening your musky leaders allows the fly line to have a greater effect on the fly. This works both in air and underwater when you're retrieving. Most importantly, it helps you develop a more efficient cast. And I am gonna go to the whiteboard and show you why. Casting. Gasting? All right, short leaders benefit the cast immensely. When you're, when you have a, when you've developed a loop when you're casting your fly, your fly. This fly is creating a ton of resistance and it's up to the mass in this part of the fly line to pull that fly forward. That is if your leader is in this area or once your loop starts to straighten out and your leader is roughly right there, you no longer have any mass in front of the fly to continue its momentum. So the fly line has completely stopped moving. The only mass you have left in the line is what's in your leader, which is relatively none. Now let's say for a second that this distance is eight feet. When you change directions to your back cast, you actually have to pull this line eight feet before it makes connection with that fly again. And it, it, if you wait too long, your fly ends up doing this. and your cast is screwed up even more. In order for this line to straighten out and fall into the water, the fly has to move eight feet to get to the end of this loop. It has to move eight feet on its own momentum. And this is against the force of wind. Not only that, but once it gets to the end of the line, it has to continue on for another eight feet to straighten out. Based on momentum alone, your fly is not going to make that 16 feet very cleanly. Because it's got 16 feet to turn over, it's really hard to develop speed for a cast. What ends up happening if you have an 8 foot leader is gravity takes place and forces your line straight down into the water at a very steep angle. Then when your fly line lays out, it looks a little bit like this. If you shorten your leader, let's say, now I'm just putting this number out there. Three to four feet is a great number. Four feet is kind of on point. We're just gonna say that your leader is now four feet. So in order to get to the end of the fly line, it has to travel four feet. And in order to get to straighten out, it has to travel another four feet, making it a total of eight feet, which the fly can move on its own momentum. Now your fly is still going to crash the water a little bit. It's always gonna do it because your flies are heavy, your line's heavy, your leaders are heavy, everything's heavy in this system. So your fly ends up crashing the water a little bit. So it ends up looking like this. So even if your cast, when you lay it out, looks a little bit like this, or it looks a little bit like this, you're still good. As long as your fly is beyond your fly line, you did well. One of the only ways to maintain this momentum is to generate a higher line speed, which can be done with a four foot leader better than it can be done with an eight foot leader. Because your leader is only four feet long, it tends to straighten out faster, which makes your turnover from going back and forth uh, that much faster. And that helps develop line speed. So when you're double hauling, you're actually developing line speed, not just picking up all your slack. In short, short leaders make for a higher velocity cast with big flies. This same thought process can also be turned over into bass and trout flies. Keep that in mind. Having a short leader on a bass popper will change your life. Now another important factor of shortening your leader is to reduce stretch. You're effectively putting more power into your hook set by having less stretch there. This is 20 pound lead. I will show you right now how much this stretches. So I'm gonna hold this as hard as I can here. And this is about two feet of line. See how much that pulls? That's almost two inches of pull. That stretch will destroy your hook set. You don't wanna use 20 pound monofilament in your butt section because that is the stretchy part and you don't, you don't want any stretch going to your fish. I will show you here in just a minute how to make a break off section without sacrificing a no stretch leader. I said before that having a shorter leader allows your fly line to have more control over your fly and that works underwater as well as casting. But when you're underwater, 
your line is gonna sink faster than your fly. Cause most cases we're using these big wind resistant slash water resistant flies and they just don't, there's too much resistance there for gravity to pull it down too fast. So our line ends up sinking really low. And when a fish eats it, you have to pull up, you know, if you're fishing an eight foot leader, you have to pull up 17, 18 inches of uh, slack before you get to the fish. And that's not even including the slack the fish put in the line. Uh, when, whenever a muskie eats, uh, your fly's going along, doo ba doo ba doo, and a muskie's hiding back here and going, and then he comes out and grabs it. When he grabs, he grabs a fly and rotates and stops completely. 90% of the time you get a take when you're stripping, it's when you stop and you're reaching up to start stripping again, and you get this little tiny boom. That's from the fish coming up and giving your fly a high five with its mouth. To hit really, really hard, it's just they don't move after they hit. A, a shorter leader also helps with your strike detection because I think that is the most difficult aspect of musky fly fishing when you can't see the fish and they just barely boop. On very rare occasions, you're stripping and then you just don't feel your fly anymore and that's when a fish has eaten your fly and continued moving through. So if you have a long leader, you're not gonna notice that that fly isn't there anymore. You become more connected with your fly with that short leader. Keep that in mind when you're fishing, that you are more connected with your fly, that you cast better, and also that you transfer that energy from you to the fish when you set the hook. Those are the three more, most important factors. A side effect of having a short leader is you can work the boat.